Today's faction preview is on the Death Guard, and I gotta say, it's pretty sick. Let's take a look. First up is their army rule, and I think we should all thank Grandfather Nurgle that the Death Guard army rule is not Blessings of Nurgle. Roll seven dice and look to the table and search for your doubles, blah blah blah. Death Guard have kept their Contagion's mechanic, which for 10th has been rebranded as Nurgle's Gift. It functions more or less as it used to. Enemy units within your unit's Contagion aura range reduce their toughness by one, but the starting size and the rate the aura grows is far more functional. No more will you need to spend Battle Round 1 with a rather ineffectual 1-inch aura. And by Battle Round 2, your Contagion will be a good functional 6 inches, and from Battle Round 3 onwards, you're at 9 inches. And we got their Detachment rule on preview. The Death Guard's Plague Company Detachment gives them the Spread the Sickness ability. I quite like the direction GW has taken here. Spread the Sickness gives all your Death Guard units sticky objective control once they control an objective in your command phase and such objectives gain the Nurgle's Gift ability, allowing your units to corrupt the battlefield spreading Nurgle's Garden across real space. It's a strong ability, which is also sickeningly fluffy. Lovely. Altogether, you get the capacity to debuff enemy toughness in a rather unique way than the conventional choose one target within X inches. And with the more generous scaling range, it will be more feasible to lower enemy toughness for your own shooting attacks. And the detachment rule will not only give you the luxury of leaving objectives and pressing forward against armies that are inflexible, but it also serves to create wide areas of the board which debilitate the enemy toughness. And while a unit defending an objective would already have this aura, as you'll see later on, there seems to be some stratagem interplay with this mechanic available to the Death Guard. Oh, if you guys are getting sick, then stay away from me. The article then goes on to explain Death Guard are an army of Chungus people, and instead of previewing their emblematic battle line units, we got Blightlord Terminators on display. So we might as well make the most of it. We can see the Blightlord Terminators are slow but quite tough, maintaining their superior toughness over standard Terminators, which now pushes them up to toughness 6. I would take this as a soft confirmation Plague Marines are still toughness 5. Looking at their war gear, we can see their Plague weapons all have lethal hits which nicely abstracts the corrupted nature of their war gear. And ability-wise, Blightlord Terminators have Blistering Fusillade, which allows them to reroll wound rolls of one when targeting the closest enemy unit with ranged attacks, creating a rather gross synergy. Death Guard is situated to be an army with wide access to critical hits auto-wounding, with regular hits having an easier time wounding due to the decreased toughness caused by Nurgle's Gift, which is then bolstered by the Blightlord's own Blistering Fusillade. And in the character spotlight, we got a malignant plague caster. His fixed witch fire power is Plague Wind, which is comparable to Smite but has the Torrent ability and can dish out a few more shots when focused. But note that it is not capable of dealing mortal wounds the way Smite can. He has two other psychic abilities. Gift of Contagion works on a 2+, allowing you to select an enemy unit within 18 inches, giving their melee attacks minus one to wound. A great defensive perk, but an even better one for an army that is already tougher than the standard Astartes. And Pestilent Fallout works with Plague Wind. If it managed to wound its target, that unit has 2 inches subtracted from their movement and a minus 2 to their advance and charge rolls. This sees Pestilent Fallout, and to a certain degree the malignant Playcaster himself, becoming a control tool rather than one which spews out loads of mortal wounds. Which I think is a change for the better, as it's more interactive. Onto the weapons, we have the Plague Burst Mortar in the spotlight. It's lost a pip of AP with the 10th edition AP deflation, but has gained more shots and lethal hits as a plague weapon, which forces battle shock tests on enemy infantry units which were hit. This I think will add a certain utility to these hard to shift tanks, though in that regard, I do wish we got to see its profile in full. And in the stratagem spotlight, we get the Plague Company stratagem, Sanguis Flux which gives a Death Guard unit sustained hits. And if the unit you select is on an infected objective, it gets sustained hits too. It makes the Death Guard a dread evoking foe to face down in melee combat, which is how I like them. Also, I want to add here, upon further examination, this stratagem could be insanely good. It works on any unit. Meaning? Meaning you could give Mortarion sustained hits too. And while we don't have his profile on preview, I think it's safe to assume he'll be similarly lethal to Gilliman, which is terrifying. And that's it for this one. Pretty good overall, I'd say. I feel what was shown well communicates the Death Guard style of play. 
though it loses some points. Not showing Plague Marines and Mortarion makes it harder to grasp the floor and ceiling of the army. Plus, I think we're all curious about what the Plague Marine's ability is, and how the Icon of Nurgle interacts with the army rule. I'd also make the case we ought to have seen Mortarion as well. Not only is he the Death Guard distilled, but it would be interesting to see how he scales with his brothers and other Big Cheese characters. And while the Plague Burst Mortar is a very unique weapon for the Death Guard, given the toughness inflation we've seen, I'd find more value in seeing where the Entropy Cannon sits, so as to better gauge how capable the Death Guard will be at dealing with the inflated toughness standards at range. I'd love to give it a 7, but this one gets a 6 from me. But tell me what do you think of this Death Guard faction focus?